In 2012, there was a large coronal mass ejection from the sun. Luckily for us, this was not directed towards Earth. We would have been in a lot of trouble. It's thought that had the 2012 storm hit Earth, it would have caused around $2 trillion worth of damage by disrupting communications and infrastructure. As we rely more and more on technology, that potential for damage is only likely to increase. What causes this devastation are ions, the name given to the charged particles that make up a solar storm. They deluge our atmosphere, creating powerful electrical currents. But they're invisible, a shower of particles too tiny to see. But the energy they release can be visualised using a microwave and a single grape. So let's slice a grape in half. Just place it on the dish there with the two halves just touching. Place them into the microwave. Set this for 10 seconds. This tiny eruption is a scaled-down version of the energy released by ions reacting with our atmosphere. <laughs> so here we have our smoking grapes. So what's happened here is that the microwaves have the same wavelength as the size of the grape. When the microwaves enter the grape, they get trapped inside and they build up a resonance. Where the grapes are touching, the energy is focused there and this ionises the salts in the grape. This then excites the oxygen in the air and this creates a plasma. <laughs> I want to do it again. The huge mass of ions in a solar storm creates explosive spikes of energy and that is where the threat to our technology lies. But we're not completely unprotected. The Earth has its own natural defences, the magnetosphere. The magnetosphere of the Earth is the magnetic field that surrounds the Earth and it acts like a magnetic shield. So it can protect us from interplanetary magnetic fields and the charged particles from the solar wind. Usually, the magnetosphere fends off the stream of solar material. On the side of the sun, when the solar wind comes in, it sort of squashes the magnetic field on one side of the Earth. And then on the far side, by deflecting the charged particles around the Earth, we get a long tail on the nighttime side of the Earth. And so this can generate the beautiful aurora that we observe when the charged particles are transported by the magnetic field down into our atmosphere and closer to the surface. So if the solar wind is like a stiff breeze, then a coronal mass ejection is like hurricane force winds. The force of a solar storm with its own magnetic field distorts Earth's magnetosphere and slingshots a mass of electrified particles into our atmosphere. So these charged particles are going to interact with anything electronic or anything that can conduct charge. So this includes long pipelines such as uh, fuel pipelines or water pipelines. It also includes satellites in the atmosphere, your personal electronic equipment, uh, as well as a huge concern is power stations and power lines. 